On Arrival Live today, we take you to the Ashanti region where the police from the Motor Transport and Traffic Directorate are an, unable to celebrate the reduction in road traffic accidents in the region this year. The reason is simple. Though there have been fewer accidents this year compared to last year, more lives have rather been lost. Let's hear from Superintendent Emmanuel Adubwahin, Ashanti Regional MTTD boss, who backs this with statistics from January to October. The total cases reported to the police from 1st January 2019 to the same period, 3rd October 2019, as compared to 2020 was 2,470 accident cases, 2019. Mm -hmm. This year, 2020, it is 2,375, difference of 95, mm -hmm. which we have about a 4% uh, decrease. Mm -hmm. So this is the situation on the ground. However, when we come to the number where we, the, the emphasis has been for some time now, because as we have experienced four percentage decrease mm -hmm. in the total crashes, we would have or one would have expected that the fatality to also reduce. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, that hasn't been the case. Same period last year, we recorded 338 deaths, mm -hmm. but this year we have 393. Difference of 55. And later this evening on the Joe News Channel, we'll bring you a story of greatness. We'll tell you the phenomenal, sustained and impactful life of the National Chief Imam of Ghana, Sheikh Osman Nuhu Sharubutu. Here are excerpts of the story as told by Latif Idris. Sheikh Osman Nuhu Sharabutu. His greatest triumph lies in his legacy as a peace building champion, a leader, a philanthropist, a humanitarian, and a teacher. That legacy stretches beyond the boundaries of Ghana to neighboring countries like Nigeria, Senegal, and Morocco, where he has publicly taking his teachings of the religion of Islam and the campaign for religious tolerance too. I haven't seen him use a, a, a earpiece to enable him here. I see he's got all his teeth. I see him not using glasses like I'm using glasses now. He would stand up and in his own soft, quiet way be moving. But how did this beautiful, sustained, and progressively impactful journey all begin? He was born in Kauli, where the father and mother lived in Kauli, just about uh, 200 meters or 150 meters from where I stand. But behind me here is where the national chief imam was raised from cradle. This is where he lived with the mother. So I lead you to the house and I point you to the room that they lived in before he left here. Over there is where the room that his eminence, the national chief imam was raised. That's the room he lived with his mother till the age of about eight when he started schooling and he was taken to old Fadama. Islam is one of the major religions practiced widely in Ghana. Its presence in Ghana dates back to the 10th century. The mainstream Sunni community, made up of the Tijaniya and Al Sunna, make up approximately 80% of the Muslim population, as against the Ahmadiyya and Shia community, constituting about 20% of the population. These different sects live together and worship peacefully under the leadership of the Grand Mufti. 
prior to, most of them even thought that Ahmadiyyat was against Islam, and some of them believed that Ahmadiyyat has been planted by Israel with the backing of the United States of America to infiltrate the ranks of Muslims and undo Islam for and on behalf of the Zionists. Prior to him, like I said, Al-Sunnah man had nothing doing with a Shiite. A Shiite had nothing doing with uh, a Tijani. The story airs at 8.30 p.m. on the Joy News channel and also on our Facebook page, we're Joy News on TV. And that's how I end the AM News. I am a pizza CBD.